everybody. Um, thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, myself, Andrew Walker, I'm here with Wendell McGowan. And um, we're here to talk to you a little bit tonight about prophetic things, the prophetic side of things, the edge of things like that, and how we see things through a prophetic lens and uh, being led by the Holy Spirit when we look at the scriptures. You know, it, it's it's really the way to do it and the way to go. Um, Wendell, how you doing tonight? I'm doing good. We just pray everybody had a good holiday season, great Christmas, great New Year's. Uh, but we're back to start taking ground again. Amen. And uh, so we just want to give out some things that will probably be helpful and fruitful for you. And uh, tonight we're going to talk about breaking the power of fear. Mm. And uh, th this thing, this is the enemy's number one weapon is fear. Mm. On every level, mm. from in the church and out of the church, we have got to break this once and for all. Amen. And the bottom line is the only thing that's ever going to totally destroy fear is for us to be real students of the king. Amen. To be real disciples who eat his word, drink his word, feed on his word, and begin to worship him day and night. That's how we're going to get rid of this crazy amen, amen. stuff. No, that's good. Uh, man, I want to encourage people. Man, we, we are worshiping our way out of this mess we're in but we're coming out of it amen we're yeah. coming out of it anybody i'm not gonna get too much they don't like punch my button in the in the political arena but but the truth is we're pushing our way through we're going to see the church rise up in a in a way that she's probably never been revealed yeah yeah, um, yeah. god had to shake everything that could be shaken yeah. and uh but a lot of it is 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 a fear, you know. We saw it in the church when people wouldn't come to church because somebody said you might get something instead of believing God. Now, but but here's the deal: We're, we just want to do a little teaching tonight on how to break fear, and or a, 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 a little bit of a primer on how to break fear. And I just want to start with this statement: that fear sucks the wind out of faith. It sure does. It sucks. It is yeah. the absolute. Uh, it is the absolute assaulting enemy of faith. Yeah. Whenever you're in fear, you can use that as an indicator that you need to grow in faith. So what do you do with that? You start to feed on the word. You get around the people of God. You get around people who are speaking life, not death. Amen. And you'll begin to break it down. So that's just a practical man. I tell you, I've always. I cannot stand negative. Negative to me oh, I know. Yeah. is is the hotbed for fear. Yeah. Whenever somebody's real negative around you, what they're trying to do, they're either subtly or just blatantly trying to put fear in you. Mm -hmm. So, and that happens. It does happen. That I mean, happens. come on, we've all grown up with that stuff. I mean, you grew up around a culture, uh, Andrew, of, of, a, of a of a of a of a deceptive uh, ministry. Mm -hmm. That, that tried to keep everybody in their pen because they were afraid the world was going to get destroyed. Yeah. And, and again, we're just talking about our history. Yeah. You were young enough. It didn't really get a stronghold. Yeah, in I you. was a little kid. Yeah. You was Thank a little God kid. <laughs> but, but man, I ministered to a lot of people and man, they were great people, but they, but they emphasize the fact that, that we're about to get, judged by God, and we better get ready because we're going through the tribulation. Mm -hmm. and, and you know what? Uh, if that happens, you know what I'm going to say? As it was in the days of Noah, so yeah. will it be when the Son of Man cometh. Well, what happened when Noah? God spoke to him. Absolutely. God told him. Yeah. That's what we put a lot of focus on, hearing God. Yeah. You have got to hear God. That's the only way you're going to stay out of fear is to hear God. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's I, right. I know I'm kind of rattling on no, here tonight. No, that's exactly right. But, but but if you look at that with Noah, that's how he overcame the judgment that was coming. He didn't tell. He told everybody to repent. There was rain coming. They didn't know what that was. Yeah. But the truth was, when it came, they did know. Yeah. But it was too late. Yeah. Yeah. Because they had no faith to get on that ark. Well, we're getting on that ark, and his name is Jesus. Yeah, that's right. Amen. So, um, you know, we're going to talk about this a little bit tonight. Um, you want to read the scripture? Yeah, let's read the scripture. I want to read something to you. So we're talking about how um, uh, fear sucks the wind out of faith, right? So this is uh, Joshua 4.24, and here's what it says. So that all the people of earth may know 
that the hand of the Lord is mighty, so that you may fear the Lord your God forever. Now, that is such a packed verse. Mm -hmm. Because it's telling you the right kind of fear. Right. Amen. The right kind of fear is to fear God. Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? That means that you fear God from the aspect that you don't want to get out of his presence. Mm -hmm. That's the fear of God is getting out of his presence. Yeah. And, and the fear of the world removes you from the presence of God. It does. I hope you can kind of see this compare. The fear that the enemy issues takes you away from the presence of God. Like I said, it's it's the enemy of faith. It sucks the wind out of faith. It does. But the fear of God draws you near to him. Amen. And he draws near to you. That's the kind of fear. So there is a right kind of fear. Um, you know, just a, a, on a, even a practical example, you, we teach our children don't put your hand on a hot stove. Right. And when they do, they they see the result of that, and then they got a godly fear. I don't want to get burnt by that anymore. Right, yeah. So, you know, just just on a matter of speaking, fear is not a sin. It's, it's what kind of fear. Mm -hmm. God will cause, or there'll be things come in our journey that, that initially will put a, a, a fleshly fear in us, mm -hmm. But that's why it says to lean on God yeah. and to trust in not our own understanding, but lean and acknowledge all our ways unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're doing. You want to read another scripture? Or yeah. you want to count on that a little more? Yeah, this is Psalm uh, 27, 14. It says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. It says, yes, wait for the Lord. Now see, this is a powerful yeah. verse on how to combat fear. Mm -hmm. Wait on the Lord. Uh, be strong and let your heart take courage. Uh, in other words, uh, you know the, the the writer of the of the of the scripture was letting us know, yeah, you will have a season of challenge or warning, but just wait on the Lord, and then when you wait long enough, then you'll get courage to know what you need to do, Absolutely. and it, it may it may be to, to take out a giant. Yeah. Uh, you know, David waited on the Lord, mm -hmm. and he got a stick and a string and took yeah. out the loud mouth. Amen. And we got to take out these loud mouths that's coming against yeah. us right now. Yeah. And that, how do we do that? We wait on the Lord, and He'll renew our strength. Yeah. You got you got the first one. You know, uh, the hand of the Lord is mighty, so that you won't fear. So the opposite of fear or being afraid to take a risk or to do something that God's telling you to do is trusting in the fact that you can't lose because the hand of the Lord is mighty. And one of the things that God's going to do with you, who does this with us, is he's always going to have us do things or go places that will force us to trust him because you can't get there unless you do. And so what does the enemy do? He knows the box to keep you from moving is the box of fear. And so the opposite is, obviously, we know that the fear of the Lord is, it's an honor, a respect, a reverence for what Wendell said. Understanding that I want to keep God right here, because if I step out of where he is, then that mighty hand of the Lord is not going to back up what I'm doing and where I'm going. But if I'm going and doing what he says, then I have that confidence that the hand of the Lord is mighty. So you can't lose. And then the next one, right? He said, be strong and take courage. Well, that's how you do it. How do you take? How do you be strong? You take courage, which means when God says move, you move. Um, and then the last one here says, this is Matthew ten thirty one. Do not fear; you're more valuable than a great number of sparrows. Um, <clears throat> the, the, this whole passage, all of these passages are loaded on the on the counters of how to deal with fear. And, and the 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 way the enemy uses fear is because we don't realize we serve a Big God, mm -hmm. big God, yeah, yeah. big God. When we were in Toronto many years ago, 20 years ago, there was someone that got hit with the power of God. They couldn't say a word except say big God. Amen. And every time they said it, people would shake and they would shout and they would scream and they would give God thanks mm. because God was releasing in those meetings the reality of mighty God. He amen. is a mighty yep. God. Amen, amen. Uh, yep. Man, uh, I'll tell you, even you would be surprised if you would just take a daily commitment 
to just read one scripture a day of the strength of God, mm. of the of the power of God, and, and just read that every day. You'll be amazed at how strong you'll get. After a little season, you won't feel it the first time, but the more you read the scripture, and, and I've been I've been meditating on scriptures that, that deal with the peace and the power of God for almost two years, and I'm starting to get amazed. I thought, like, oh, man, this is amazing. Mm. I just feel an unseen strength that doesn't come because of the words that I'm reading, but because mm -hmm. of the promises that I'm beginning to believe Amen. because I've read them Amen. enough to let it go from my head into my heart. Amen. And I've been reading the scripture for years, but I, I feel like a lot of people, you know, somebody told me Sunday said, we need to go back to the basics. Well, that's where we're at. When you hear God, that's the basics. Yeah. But but we need to go back to the basics of daily feeding on the word of the Lord mm -hmm. and daily giving God thanks and daily doing some kind of worship. Uh, we just need to do that every day. That's how we're going to break the power of fear. Mm -hmm. Fear won't get us. If you listen to the talking heads uh, on the one-eyed God, uh, Sometimes you can get overwhelmed with all the baloney that they say mm -hmm. unless you hear God in the midst of it. So, um, you know, this this subject of, of breaking fear because it sucks the wind out of faith. Yeah, and amen. faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. And That's again, it. it's these two emphases we have here, mm -hmm. uh, Andrew, and, and what you're doing just a magnificent job of re establishing over and over is it you got to hear God we don't need 12 you comment on that yeah yeah comment on that like, yeah on, on hearing God yeah and yeah. the 12-step programs and all oh, that yeah, stuff. yeah sure sure so so that yeah I mean hearing God is is you have a wonderful counselor and his name is the Holy Spirit his name is Jesus it's the Father you have the Spirit of the Father and Son living inside of you so you have two options you can either go with man's version of counsel which takes the counsel from the world throws some bible at it you know gets the holy spirit to direct it and use it or you can go a step higher and learn to hear god and commune and let the holy spirit do it with you you can have someone else do that for you um, but god really is jealous for you and your relationship with him so you can have the holy spirit do that for you take some faith on your part and take some understanding to say you know what? i'm going to believe god and if you'll do that he'll do it for you you have the best counselor you could ever want and that's the holy spirit and so you got to do that for sure and i'll tell you something else too um you know hearing god is a basic i mean it's a basic. foundation jesus said my sheep they know my voice you know he, he said this to the disciples he talked to them about it and so it's a basic thing and so you know um, i know hearing god isn't a basic for people who've not been taught that and, uh, and I'll tell you something else, too. Sometimes when people are always wanting to go back to the basics, it's because they're too afraid to move on to where God wants to take them. And, and that is being still and knowing that I'm God. Absolutely. They, right. they are afraid to stop and listen to the voice of the Lord. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and th this deal about hearing God, you know, I used to kind of challenge you a little bit way back when we first started, when you said we don't need 12-step program. Well, we really... Uh, I, we've got nothing against 12-step programs, but the truth is there's a, mm -hmm. a higher and, level. And if you, if you, even when you get involved in a 12-step program, again, this is not condemning or criticizing those ministries. I value what they've done because they're trying to help people mm -hmm. that are having a hard time hearing God. But even those things, if you'll look at the concepts of them, they're always wanting you to begin to put your focus on a higher power. That's right. Come on, Amen. why don't we just skip the 12 steps and go right to the higher power? Yeah, most of the step programs, I mean, all of them, I don't know of one program that's going to try to get you to hear God. Well, they 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 do it. If you know one, name it. Yeah, well, I don't all, all I'm saying, the only way they do it is just like that. That's what I'm saying. They don't know they don't do that. They what don't they do, do what they do is they keep you needing them and their program. And, um, yeah. and now, if there was a program out there that said, look, I'll help you, but the ultimate goal here is for you to hear God and start doing this yourself, well, then that's great. But that's not what happens. What happens is people, because they can't hear God, they get stuck in the program, 
And that's why you do it for the rest of your life. They, they get uh, codependent. Yeah. They get codependent. Again, these are well intentioned. I want to say this clearly. These oh, are yeah, well intentioned yeah. yeah. people. It's all they know. That's all they know. All they know. And know. the church in which most of us came out of. And the church is what pulled all this stuff in. They pulled the it in. The church pulled it all in. Trying to help yeah, people. Because they, they, they never knew you need to hear God. You know, and and obviously uh, there's churches out there, even large churches, that'll tell you you can't hear God and that they don't. And the, the leaders say we don't hear God. It's just you have to read your Bible, and then and then the next thing you know, they're telling you that they're hearing God. And it's like, what is wrong with you? You know. Anyway, but we, like I said, like Wendell said, we we don't have anything against anyone. But there is a better way, and um, we're asking everybody to pick it up, well, pick and, up that better way, and see. It's all perfect because without the prophetic, there you go. That's it. You have a challenge to hear the voice of the Lord. If you say the prophetic is not for today, what you're saying is the voice of the Lord cannot be heard right. today. Because right. that's what the prophetic does. Yeah. It gives a now word. I, I was hearing people criticizing a great, well, I, I'll, I'll say it. I get so, I get, I, I, I YouTube surf a lot. Mm -hmm. And I look at some of the junk these guys <laughs> say against churches like Bethel, Ken Copeland, Papa Hagen. Now, is there is there things that are a little bit uh, strange with some? Yeah, but why don't you keep your mouth shut <laughs> about that? And why don't you go there firsthand? Go if find you out go for there yourself. firsthand, yeah. Yeah. don't hear some secondhand deal over over a uh, internet thing or what somebody told you that that really had an offense. Why don't you yeah. go there? And yeah. if you did, you would see it's a whole other deal. Absolutely. And this is what makes me so angry. I hear these guys, and I want to get out there, and I want to, <laughs> I want, I want to throw my shoe at that thing. I wish, because, because they're faceless people, Yeah, they get in there, and they pull things out of context. Sure. They don't hear the heartbeat of the ministries that's going on. Yeah. Again, you know, some of the stuff is... You know, the naming and claiming and all that stuff. Well, there, there's a biblical principle about give and it shall yeah. be given. Yeah. That's Come right. on. Even I mean, in every one of those ministries, God's used them. They used them. God's moved through them. I mean, it doesn't matter where you're at. And, and sometimes, yeah, and we overemphasize some yeah. things. And what we're saying is there is a best practice, and it's one that is led by the Spirit of God, where you hear Him. And again, we're talking about breaking fear. Fear sucks the wind out of faith, right? And um, I'll tell you, that again is, is a fear aspect. It's taking people because you're afraid of what might happen when people do hear God. Well, that's fear. Stop being afraid of what happens when people hear God. Let them hear God first. And if somebody needs help, help them. But let God move and don't stop him from moving. But if something needs to be corrected, go ahead and correct it. But absolute fear is just clamping down on everything. God's not supposed to move. The spirit can't move. You can't hear. You can't make decisions for yourself. I mean, the list it never that, ends. That's ultimately when they criticize. When you hear guys on the internet criticizing somebody else, it's a subtle attack to keep you from hearing God and make you fearful. Yeah. Even you know, I tell you, forerunners always push the envelope. They, do. they always. Uh, break they're breaking down walls and some things haven't been perfected yet but mm -hmm. my goodness don't kill them because they're pressing in to new land but but what that does if you look at anything where they've criticized when you see these guys criticizing other ministries and, and i've watched them for years yeah. i've watched them for years yeah. man and i listen to them, oh yeah that makes sense that makes and then i started wait a minute that's a bunch of bunk, man. <laughs> Come on, give me a break. You know, uh, yeah, I wish they would you. quit doing that. Spend time. If you see something on or from a ministry that you don't like, why don't you spend a little time with God for God to speak to you how you can address it from your sphere of influence yeah. instead of tearing down somebody else's. Yeah, yeah, now, yeah. if they're out and out uh, a cult, which they are not, there's not... Very many that are cults. Is there the potential? Maybe. Yeah, some of them are teetering on the line. They're, but they're teetering, not. but yeah. so what? Yeah, yeah. If right. you hear God, you, yeah. you, know, you know what? I'm going to say this in closing. My friend Bill Johnson at Bethel Church, we've been friends for 50 years, and I don't care about anybody, he says. I'm proud he's my friend. I know him. He is the real deal. But, but, 
But when we first started moving in Reading and seeing God show up with miracles and all these guys are criticizing miracles, they were criticizing the prophetic. And I'm thinking, you guys don't know anything. And I would tell Bill, he would bring guys in that did teach some stuff that was a little sideways. I said, man, what are you doing? You know what he told me? Yeah, I do remember. You, know, you remember what I told you? I he said, I'm bringing in people who's got a little air so these people can see the truth. There you go. Because the church has been too long saying that the guy in the pulpit is God, and anything that's said from the pulpit ha ha cannot be challenged. And he said, I want to teach people how to hear God for themselves. Amen. That was a profound word. Yeah, it is. And, and I saw, you know, that church, I saw Bethel lose about 1,500, 2,000 people. But now they got about 15, 20,000 people going there. Amen. And they hear God. Is there still a few quacks? Usually <coughs> there is when you get that many people. But my point to that was, is Bill understood if I give them the real thing and there's something that's not real, I it. haven't done my job if they cannot discern they that. Can't tell. Right. And see, and that's where fear comes in. If you don't think you can hear God, somebody says, well, that person, you might be getting blessed. You might have got healed from the ministry. And somebody says, they're a cult teacher. Yeah. The enemy is going to use that to try to rob your healing. Yeah. Try to yeah. rob your breakthrough. So what does the Bible say before you can adjust the speck in your neighbor's eye? That's right. Get the plank out of your own. Yeah, man. I tell you, I know we kind of hit this, but this all has to do with fear. Yeah, I never even yeah. compared it, but, but all this stuff, I'll get on there and I'll start YouTube surfing yeah. and I'll see these guys. Jesus, do I like them all? Well, I listen to them all, yeah. but I know what to take and what to spit out. All the jabs out there going yeah. against all these different ministries from one end of the spectrum to the other. And you, you can name them. Yeah. You know, from people wearing skinny jeans to people wearing robes, <laughs> all everything in between. <laughs> Or shaving their head. Or whatever. All of those jabs come from a place of fear. Yeah. From the people who just need to do Who cares? It doesn't matter. Just do what God's telling you to do. Don't be afraid. You, you know what fear's target is? Insecurity. Yeah, come on. It's just insecurity. Just plays that like a fiddle, man. Uh, man, insecurity. So just recognize that we're all, and, and I'll just, I know we're just about out of time here, but I want to say this. I, I know and have walked and ministered with a lot of strong uh, people and leadership, but, but, but I've also had a lot of heart-to-heart -heart and one-to-one -one connections. And I know that almost every person I've ever talked with, without having relationship with others that they can communicate with, they always, every one of them told me, I'm always dealing with insecurity. Mm. And the only way you break that is to, the Bible says, encourage mm yourself in the Lord, but encourage one another Absolutely. with these things. Yeah, amen. So it, the way to break fear is to get somebody that's positive, that's not going to reinforce your negative thought. So oh, I get too passionate about this. But start to speak the goodness of God. Amen. Because the goodness of God brings men to repentance, amen. not your criticism and your analyzation and your critique. Come on. Come on. Amen. So we just want to encourage you, even this night, to be encouraged in the Lord. Amen, be amen. strong. As the Lord told Joshua, be strong and of good courage. Fear not. Amen. For I'm with you, says the Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you next time.